Good evening. Good evening. Hey, good evening, good evening. Ho, oh, hey, everybody, good evening. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Yes. Amen. That's what you should tell your Holy Spirit every time you wake up in the morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. You get it? Amen. So you think that's corny, don't you? Uh, yeah. No, that's not, man. <laughs> See? See, Jesus said he took the foolish things of the world, which is preaching, and people, the world thinks, preach, thinks preaching is foolish, mm -hmm. but it's the preaching that people get saved. So that may sound kind of corny, but when you think about it, think about it now, think about it. You wake up in the morning, and you tell the Holy Spirit, welcome me to the house. But he's already in there. Oh, that's good. So, so what should we say then? You too slow. You too slow. <laughs> too slow, man. Yeah, you got to get in the spirit, man. You're too slow. You got to think about it. You got to think about it. It ain't in you. You got to think about it. It ain't in you, man. You got to be like, see, when Jesus, when every time they approached Jesus, Jesus always had an answer. He was ready. And it's not like he knew what they were going to ask him. Of course, he did. Because there was, there was, there was some, some scripture said that he knew their thoughts. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly you know, so the Holy Spirit would bear witness. So you should know what I'm going to ask you. See, ooh, the Holy Spirit, check it. You got to do a check. Ooh, you should know. Hey, man, good morning, everyone. Thank you for good joining us. Good morning. Yes, joy comes in the morning. Oh, okay. See, there you go again. See, don't miss it. We mean, man, we need to start all over again. I'm gonna have you pray tonight, cause we need we need some some you need you need some oh, Jesus. I need. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I need just a little more Jesus. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Are you sinking again? I am. It's okay. Relax. Sinking deep us. down. You know those the rest of us say, are you sinking down? <laughs> you see, you're sinking. You need to come back up, sweetheart. Cause you're starting to look like a midget. It's okay. It's not okay. See, that's what happens, man. We get, we, we get complacent and we say, you know what? I'm going to stay in this rut that I'm in. I'm going to just keep on sinking. You know what? <laughs> I guess she's just going to be deep all night. Huh? Be deep. It's just going to be deep man, all night. Man, girl, I'm on a 21-day fast. <laughs> and everything is like, man, I'm okay. like, everything right. is like spiritual right now, man. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Again, for the last time. Good evening, everyone. And yes. we thank you for those of you that are joining us tonight, man. We thank God for you all for being with us here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. We're so grateful for you, your presence, and for you Absolutely. taking the opportunity to, to know and, and to accept the fact that, you know, there was something tonight that you desire and you will find it here. Mm -hmm. Um I believe it, it was either Job or David says that um, I esteem your words more than my necessary food. Mm -hmm. Elder, was that Job or David? I can't remember who said that, but I esteem your words more than my necessary food. I believe it's David. Find that for me, uh, one of you Bible scholars. Um, do, do the do the necessary food in the in the King James version. Just just Google or either on your Bible app necessary food, and 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 uh, and, and uh, see what what scripture comes up. Necessary food. In the King James Version or the New King James Version. I believe it's in Psalms. But anyway, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, I'm Pastor T. What you got? Where's your mic at? Tell it, Deke. See, you got to get in the spirit, Deke. <laughs> Job 23, um, chapter 23, verse 12. So it's Job 23 and 12. Neither have I gone back. From the command of his lips, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than necessary. Food. More than necessary food. Amen. Man, and so because you're here tonight, I'm 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 believing that you find something in in, in terms of necessity. You being here was a was a necessity for you, and so we thank God for you all that are joining joining us here, both physically as well as those of you that are joining us virtually, uh, on on um, on our our site. Uh, we just pray that whatever you, you are expecting, that you're not expecting it from man, but you're expecting it from God. Amen. And I truly believe that you're in the Lord's house tonight. And so um, we, just, we just thank God for you, uh, for being here. Uh, anything before you start praying? 
Baby, you, you really have to come up. You keep sinking, for real. So you just can't let okay. that go. Well, let's do this then. I'll bring it back up, but let's switch chairs because, yeah. you know, you're a little bit lighter than me. <laughs> that might help. I don't know if that's I, a I compliment. It is. I don't know because, you know. how you receive it. Yeah, because, you know, you know, when I think about my muscles and everything, I don't <laughs> Me being a man and everything, you know, you kind of like trying to mess with my manhood a little bit. You lighter than me. It makes, you know, it's almost sounding like, you know, you could whoop me or something, you know. Now, is <laughs> like, that the spirit or the flesh? No, I said, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It sound like you saying. You know, I got to make sure. You okay. good? Yes, thank you. Are uh, you going to stay up? Yes. All right, stay up. We're going to stay up. D. What's up? I need you to pray for this chair, bro. <laughs> I can't be sinking like no midget, bro. All right, here we go. Just take it easy. Amen. <laughs> Just don't move. If you don't move, nobody will see you sink, That's right? Good. All right. Let's, uh, let's go into the prayer, sweetheart. We can begin our Bible study. Uh, well, you asked me if I had anything. Oh, I did ask you that. You did ask me that. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to see how everyone's day was yesterday. Oh. It was the World's Love Day. But mm -hmm. Of course, we know that God sent his only begotten son, right? Yes. And uh, he, get, he sent him that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So we, he is love and we <laughs> are love if we are in him. So Amen. prayerfully, everybody had a great day. Um, yeah. I, I want to commend you on that post you posted uh, yesterday with the Valentine's Day. And then they, what did it? Oh, yeah. And it, 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 on the church uh, Facebook page. Yeah, and it, it was. It had Valentine from God, and then it just broke down. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. So for every letter in Valentine, it, it read. It, you were able to read the whole right. scripture. Mm -hmm. So the V was. Loved. But you, you, we're gonna go through. No, I just yeah. I, go to that. <laughs> go to the site and yeah. see what I'm talking about. It was really good. I was like, wow, that was nice. I had to actually uh, share it myself. Yeah, I found it online. You found online. Mm -hmm. Well, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you tonight. We give you all praise, glory, and honor just yes, for who Father. you are. We love you, but you loved us first. And we yes, thank Lord. you just for the opportunity just to sit here tonight to break the word. We pray that mm -hmm. uh, something is said, something is heard, something is received that yes, will change Lord. our lives forevermore. We thank you thank for you, this Father. opportunity to grow in you. Yes. And we just pray right now that uh, everything that is uh, said tonight, Lord, that is meant to be food and nourishment for our spirits. Hallelujah. And we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We pray that lives will be changed. Yes, we thank Lord. you, Lord, that uh, strongholds will be torn down. We thank you, Father, that uh, our thinking will be transformed by the hearing of your words. Yes, so we Father. bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So last week, we're going to go ahead and begin last week. So we've been talking this month about love. And so Wednesday night's Bible studies, we're talking about love your enemies, mm -hmm. love your enemies. And so I, I want to start off with the scripture that we used last week. But I also want to bring to your uh, attention uh, a, a parallel scripture that's that uh, re uh, reads pretty much the same. Uh, but it's coming out of the Gospels. And so the first one I'm coming out of is Luke chapter 6. Uh, in the New Living Translation, Luke, cha Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 36. And then we're going to go into, I'm going to read another one coming out of Matthew. Uh, but we're going to go into Luke chapter 6 because I want to reference this one because this is where we came out of last week. And so let's reference this. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 36. And the Bible begins by saying, of a New Living Translation, NLT. There we go. And we begin by reading, But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on, the, on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. If you love only those who love you, 
Why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. <laughs> and all this time we thought we were doing something good, man. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Whew. Then 35 says, love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great. Not just great, but very great. And you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, who is God, our Creator, our Father. For He is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. So even our Father, our Creator, who created all, all people, He is even kind to the unthankful and the wicked. You must be compassionate just as your father is compassionate. So first question tonight, just to tap into those, for those because honestly, this may be an elementary question, but there may be someone out there who may be joining us for the very first time and is really not familiar with the Bible. So my first question tonight is, who's saying this? In the mic, in the mic, because it may be someone who's out there Jesus. in the in the virtual, virtual virtual land. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus. So, in the mic, who's saying this? Jesus. Is your mic on? Yeah. <laughs> she said it's on. Oh, that's the honor's man. So Jesus, right. Jesus is saying this. And so this very lesson that Jesus, Jesus, begin, Jesus begins to teach a lesson. And it's called the Sermon on the Mount. And, and uh, it's also identified as the Beatitudes. He begins teaching the Sermon on the Mount. And he begins to teach a whole a series of things. Now, the things that he began to teach on the Sermon on, on, uh, uh, on, the, sermon on the Mount are a lot of things that are really contrary to what the law, which is like the Old Testament things, rules and regulations of the Old Testament, that's kind of like contrary to some of the things that the law, hmm? Go ahead, oh, some of the things that the law, you know, was that, that, that they had, and, and again, the law are, some, are man-made things that man came up with to try to regulate, they tried to regulate righteousness, but they couldn't regulate righteousness. Right, right. So they tried to regulate good living and morality, but the law couldn't do that. Right. And, but that, this is what they did. And so Jesus comes back and he begins to teach things that are kind of like, I wouldn't say contrary, but it's, it's, a, it's a whole nother level of compassion, love that they, they, that they were not used to operating in. And so this is the this is the Beatitudes, the, the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. And so this one lesson, he started teaching on enemies. And now I want to go to Matthew chapter five in the New King James Version, beginning with verse 43. Now, for those of you who, 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 who are not really familiar with the Bible, the Bible in the New Testament begins with um, um, what they call the Gospels. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the Gospels. And the Gospels are an account of, of the disciples that basically documented their experience with Christ. And so this is Matthew. And Matthew begins uh, chapter 5, verse 43, uh, and we'll read 43 through 48. Pretty much the same thing, but Matthew's version of exactly the same thing that Jesus was saying. And he begins, he says in verse 43, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I want to stop right there. He begins to say, he starts off saying, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He's saying this because he's saying, this is what you were taught. This is what you heard. And this is what you were brought up believing. There's a lot of things that we were brought up believing. And Jesus is saying, what you were taught, what you were believing, well, he's bringing back to their attention. 
And, but, well, let me continue because I'm getting ahead of myself because I get, I get excited when there's revelation and, and God begins to really speak to our hearts. So he says in verse 43 again, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's, that's the Old Testament. The Old Testament, the law said that, you know, and that's what they were taught because they were taught you could stone your enemy, kill your enemy. If someone does if, if, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, this is what they were, this was written law and you were able to do that. Okay. And so if someone, whatever you did to me, I have this based on man's law. I have the right to do the same thing back to you. Okay. And then he goes on in verse 44 and he says, but I say mm-hmm. to you, but I say, mm-hmm. now, now he's saying, this is what you were taught. This is what is written, but I say. Mm-hmm. He comes back and says, but I say with the authority to basically change everything that was written in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Now, at this time, they're still trying to figure out who Jesus is. I say they, the disciples is getting to know. But remember, the world is being introduced to who Jesus Christ is. But on the Sermon of the Mount, it's not just the disciples that's being taught. Right. There's a crowd of people that's listening to, listening to him and his teaching. Okay. Pharisees, uh, Sadducees, the Pharisees, you know, all these people of the sect mm-hmm. are, are listening to Jesus now. And he's beginning to teach. But I say, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who, dis- who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Pretty much saying the same thing in Luke, right? You all agree? Somewhat familiar? Right. It's pretty this much. This is basically the same. But it's but this Matthew's, is Matthew's account. perspective. From right. His perspective. Exactly. Of listening to what Jesus right. is saying. Right. Okay. And so what, I'm, what we're doing is bear, bear witness saying that two, there's two accounts basically saying the same thing. So right. there's no misinterpretation. You know, the Bible says that where two or three, um, uh, where there are two or three witnesses, mm-hmm. then that establishes the truth. Well, here's two or three witnesses right here. And it's, and it's establishing the truth. And so for he makes his son rise on the evil mm-hmm. and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Mm-hmm. Verse 46, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Right. Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Mm-hmm. Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Two accounts basically saying the same thing. Right. Last week we asked, because since um, we were talking about uh, one, and I th- was it in the, uh, how did we get on neighbors? We were talking about neighbors. We got we on the, started talking about we started it. talking we about neighbors. About what enemies were, ah. we talked about neighbors. Because I, I gave an example. I said that Jesus gave an example. Let's go, let's go here, uh, Marsha. Um, I want to go, because I, I was, we were talking about how Jesus gave an example of, of um, and this is a lot, so I'm not going to do all this reading tonight. Mm-hmm. I want you to take notes. Those of you that are taking notes, I'm coming out of Luke chapter 10, verses 27 through 37. Again, I'm, and this is the New Living Translation, and I'm just going to I'm going to paraphrase and summarize this particular scripture. But it's Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. And the Bible begins here and, and he talks about that there was a, a certain religious person that stood up and began to question Jesus about what I need to do to have eternal life. And he begins to answer these things. And this is where Jesus began to say, love the Lord, your God, with all the heart, all thy might, all thy soul. And, 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 he, and he was saying that this is, you know, this is what the greatest, you, the commandment. greatest commandment, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then in verse 30, they begin to talk about, um, uh, uh, well, there's a question that they came up with and said, well, who's, who's my neighbor? Right. Because you're supposed to do good to your neighbor. Right. And they begin to question, well, who's my neighbor? And the, their belief back then was that their neighbor was someone who was of, of the same Basically the same religion, uh, same racial ethnicity, you know, that's my neighbor. Right. And anyone outside of that, 
is not considered my neighbor. Jesus began to give them this um, par, uh, par, um, um, what you call it? Uh, par, what is it? Parable. Thank you, sis. Begin to give up this parable to explain to them. Um, and then uh, the very first, the very last thing in verse 36, in all the scripture, after Jesus began giving some examples, he, he asked them in verse 36 in the New Living Translation. He says, now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. Verse 37, the man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Jesus had to kind of like go a long way around to try to show them that your neighbor is not just someone who has the same uh, ideal or uh, ethnicity as you or, or the same religious sect. He's saying the, he had to pull it out of the man, though, because be, prior to this parable, the guy didn't see anybody else as, this, as their neighbor. But as, as he gave him a story, the guy was like, oh, OK, yeah, the person who gave who provided the mercy. And so this is how we get how we went from last week. We were talking about the neighbor and who the neighbor is compared to your enemy. And so now we're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. And so the question was, well, who's my neighbor? Well, the neighbor is, is every and every, anyone. Your neighbor is any and everyone. Any, whoever God created, he's your neighbor. And so we're not supposed to basically uh, identify someone as uh, someone who doesn't deserve God's love right. because they're not the same as I am. So the question we asked also last week was, how do you identify in terms of, so Jesus, going back to the scripture, Jesus said, um, we are to love our enemies. The question we asked last week was, well, how do you define enemy? Right. You know, and so I, I don't want you to go back through that again because I, right. I kind of like got all that. So last week, the question was define enemy. And these are some of the answers. Um, one who does not do you or mean you well. Uh, someone that knowingly does harm or seeks to do harm out of spite or with evil intents without merit. Uh, one that is a part of your life but means you no good in life. Uh, four, someone who is disrespectful and continues doing things continuously knowing that they're hurting you. And then five, oh, I think we stopped at the five, one self, your own self could right. be your own enemy. Mm -hmm. One's own carnal mind. Right could be your own enemy. So tonight I want to go a little bit deeper in terms of this because we've identified who our enemy is. But let me ask you a question. Could God use your enemy to, instead of causing you harm, could God use the en your enemy to do you good? Everybody saying yes? Yes. Give me an example how. How, why, give me an example why and how. How, why would God use enemies to do you good? And how does he do, how does he do that? You understand the question? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say that um, sometimes if God needs to get things to you or do something for you to show who he is in your life, um, that he can use someone that may already be placed in your life that, like you said, necessarily not mean you any good, but he can use whatever attitude they're in, so to speak, to bless you. Okay. So, in essence, um, say, and I'll just oh, use uh, kind of like a story that I've, I've heard, but basically like a woman was praying for groceries. She lived next door to an atheist. So, that would be considered her enemy. Well, he goes, she needed groceries. He goes out and buys the groceries. He spends all his money on the groceries trying to show her or trying to uh, prove to her that God is, doesn't exist. So, but what he didn't realize is that in doing so, he answered the prayer that she sent to God, and God used him to answer the prayer that she prayed. So we don't always know where the blessing is going to come from, but God is going to bless. Wow. So. That's good. Wow. That's good. Yeah, I like that. That's good. I'm, I, oh, man, that's good. We're going to go. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Go ahead, Elder. Some years ago, I was building a radio station. And uh, we sent for, asked for the inspector to come and 
check it out, you know, before you put the insulation and stuff on the wall, all that kind of stuff. He would always find something wrong. Something was always wrong. And so I went to the bishop. I said, Bishop, every time we put something up or call the inspector, he always finds something wrong with it or pull it out the wall. He said, don't worry about it. He's making you better. Mm. Wow. He's making you better. Anybody else? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, and, and Oh, man, I, <laughs> I got so many things going in my head right now. Uh, when the children of Israel was... Had, had asked Pharaoh to, to allow them to leave when Moses was delivered them out of Israel. Um, you, are, you all remember that there were, there were several occasions where the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. Another example where God will use your enemy to get you to where you need to go. Um, as a Christian, sometimes we're not aware of those things, mm -hmm. and we feel like it's the devil is after us, mm -hmm. and we don't see the greater of what God is trying to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. There's a scripture. I need someone to find this for me real quick. Um, the Bible says that if the devil knew that he was crucifying Christ, and I'm paraphrasing, he would have never crucified Christ if he knew that his crucifixion was going to do what it did. Where's that scripture at, someone? Um, I can't remember. It's in the New Testament, but it says that the, I'm trying to remember how, I'm trying to quote it. But that is a good example, but we need to find that scripture tonight. Uh -huh. if, the, if, the, if Satan, baby, how do you spell crucified? That's wrong. That's it right there. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. If somebody find it, then you just keep going. What, what is it, sir? It's the Lord. You say, would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The Lord of glory. Yeah. Concordance. Yeah, trying to see where that at. I should have brought the concordance with me. Uh, is it Romans? Not that one. Corinthians. Okay, so someone, you all continue to find that and look for that. Um, but what, I, the, the, what is it? 1 Corinthians? That's it right there. I saw that. Um, uh, go, go back to 7. Go back some more. Is it 2 through 8? That's what is it? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, and let's read it in the New King James Version. Here we go. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Continue. I was with you in weakness and fear and in such and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. We're going to get to it, which none of the rulers of this age knew. Now, when they talk about rulers of this age, they're talking about the, the, the darkness, rulers of the, of the world, the, of the dark darkness of the world. They're talking about Satan. They're talking about the evil spirits. And they talk, when they talk about rulers of this age, they're talking about Satan and his, his imps, Satan and, and his... his, his uh, uh, his army, Satan's army, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Come on, let me see what's next. 
But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor have it entered into the hearts of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. And so th that particular scripture, it, 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 I, what, I, what I wanted to bring out was that point was that if Satan knew that by crucifying Christ was going to do what it was going to do, he would have never crucified him. But see, Satan thought that he was killing Christ mm -hmm. and that was going to destroy the works of God. Right. And God was like, go on, do your thing, mm -hmm. do your thing, do your thing, go on, crucify him, go ahead, crucify him. Oh, yeah, go ahead and crucify him. Not realizing, and, and, and what, what is it? there's another scripture that comes to my mind where Jesus uh, begin to tell when he was being sentenced, they begin to, he began to say, no one takes my life. He says, I lay it down. Mm -hmm. I lay my life down because he knew what he was doing. Mm -hmm. But Satan didn't know it. Right. And so when Jesus was saying those type of things, Satan probably didn't have any idea, you know, probably just thought Christ was just talking at the mouth, as we say. Mm -hmm. But God used Christ's crucifixion to save the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm using Christ as an example of, in terms of an extreme situation of what right. God will allow happen in one's life so that he can get what needs to be done in the life of his saints. Right, meaning that the enemy, the enemy may be meaning harm or wanting to do damage, but whatever it is that they're trying is working for your good. That's basically what you're trying to say. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever they're trying is always right. working for our good. Yeah. But we have to be conscious to realize that God will allow the, allow the enemy mm -hmm. to do certain things in our lives. Because God knows that though those things that the enemy is going to do, there's something in it that's going to benefit us. Right. So when we're going through those trials, when we are, you know, come up against those you know, enemies or when we see those people who may not mean us well, instead of us reacting out of flesh or feeling some kind of way or uh, maybe honing in or focusing on the situation, then we should see the bigger picture. And what is it that God is trying to teach us in the, the relationship, you know, in the, uh, the uh, discord, you know, in the the flare up or whatever happened. He may be teaching you, you may to rake or work on your patience right. or work on your anger, whenever it is that you face right. with that enemy or that person that appears to be an enemy. And, and, and this is where I want to go tonight. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we need to identify. See, a lot of times we get mad at the person. Mm -hmm. We have to stop getting mad at the person right. and realize that the enemy has influence. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Sister Mary. Yes, sir. I was, as you're talking, I was just thinking about Saul and David is a prime example of what you're talking about. I mean, exactly. probably one of the best examples of your enemy pushing and propelling you yes. into your kingdom. Into your purpose. Absolutely. Yeah, into your purpose. Into your yes. purpose. That's good. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Minister Johnson. Absolutely. I just want to say this, too, that um, oh, sometimes goodness. when we go, to, go on our knees in prayer and we're asking God, to, I'll just say, Give me more patience. Well, the only way he's going to give you more patience is if he puts you in a situation where you have to work that patience out. Absolutely. So sometimes we're going through stuff because of the things that we pray and, and we want to get better, but you can't get better until you can conquer that situation, whatever it may be. So sometimes we have to think about that. Sometimes when you're going through stuff, I'll say, okay, Lord, what did I ask you for? Right, <laughs> exactly. What did I ask you for? Right. What did I ask you for? You were going to say something? No. And, and I, I, I gave an example. Um, this thing is getting stuck. I gave an example, um, I think it was last week, mm -hmm. and I was talking about, and I wasn't asking God to give me more patience. <laughs> I wasn't asking for more patience. But God knew I needed more patience. Mm -hmm. And so there are times you don't have to ask him for it. Yeah. He already knows what you need. And so last week was a, was a challenging time but it was a challenging time of patience for me. And I had to learn. I, I had to really, I mean, I'm telling you guys, I had to like, got like dig deep. Did you? <laughs> I had to dig deep. Did you? I dug deep. <laughs> I dug deep, man. Would you man. like to share? 
I mean, you know, because, you know, you, 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 our perspective can sometimes be, be a little bit off. You know, I see things through the, I, through the perspective of God. You see things through the perspective of, you know, of yourself every now and then. You share. Come on, you share. Is this the third, is this the third Wednesday? Yeah, it'll, Keep it 100? it good to put your business out because you always put mine out. Well, talk to me. Because <laughs> a lot of times I put my own out first. Go so, ahead. you all know that he's been talking about this position, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, transitioning to the new, new Transitioning mm-hmm. to the new position at the university. She just loved telling my business. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. So, when was it? I mean, it's been a long process. So, in this long process, process, right, he had to get a physical. Um, what, are, what are some of the things that you had to have had done? All, blood work, mm-hmm. tests. A drug test. Drug test. Physical. All of this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I got to put it out here. You, do, you don't have to. Yes, yes. <laughs> you don't have so, to. We're going to a commercial break. So we'll be okay. back in five, most, four, three, most two, people, one. people, right, when you know that you have to have a drug test, you're very keen, you're aware. Of course, you know. You ain't <laughs> you're gonna not going to go there, are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Tell it all. And so, you know, they're going to test for those common things that people typically use. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, you know, Pastor has had some, you know, being a retired military and a disabled veteran, he does have some pre-existing conditions that he takes medication for. Mm -hmm. And this particular weekend, it just happened. I don't, I'm just going, this around about the time, right? So again, he's, they told him that this day you're gonna have a scheduled drug test. So maybe the weekend prior to that, I think the test is gonna be that Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. Well, <clears throat> over that weekend, he decides, I don't know, well, did you do something? Were you? Yeah, I was in pain. He was moving something, or I don't even know what happened, I but think I pulled a he muscle in my decides back. to take some oxycodone. Oh, Prescribed. 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 <laughs> I ain't go down to the corner market. <laughs> yeah, yo, bro. How much the boxes, bro? Bro, let me get two of the boxes, bro. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Listen. Listen. Yo, bro, let me get two, listen. bro. Ten dollars, man. Come on, it was eight dollars last week, man. So anyway, so. Long story short, of course, his test comes up. Positive. And yes. So. But see, it was uh-huh. like, it didn't come up positive <laughs> like five, six days later. And I'm, so but, for the five, six days, I'm like, okay, what my, my test coming up with? Why my test? Why I haven't got my results yet? And it was like three days after the test, the Holy Spirit reminded me that I had took those pills. And I brought it up. I said, "Babe, do you think Oxy will show up <laughs> on my test? Do you think that that's going to show up? <laughs> of course, it's going to show up. Why would you even take it? I didn't know, guys. I'm telling you, man. I am so. <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm, I'm, but I'm, the point is, I'm, you told me tell it. Told <laughs> <laughs> me tell it." But the point is, for real. Of course, I'm like when he's telling me this, and then when they come back and say, "Well, you need to make sure that you call and get this right with the the facility." So of course, you know, I'm all calm on the phone. You know, okay, all right, all right. You know, we know what to pray for. I got on the phone. I'm like, "Who does that? You know, you got a test coming up. Who does that? You did that." Yes. But the point is, is that that's that's even that's just part of it. Because really, he just today, just today, got his packet. So all this time, what what was that? How long has that been? So I got hired in December. The jo- I, I received the job in December. I accepted the job in December. We're in February, and so all this time, because then been... his blood work. You know, he had the uh, he's had the the, the cancer. And he's always, even throughout his whole treatment, the oncologist has said that he is just one of those people who typically has a low white blood cell count. So then they call. (laughs) 
So then they called him. When was that? Monday. It was uh, today's. Yesterday. It was, it was yesterday. Was it? Yesterday? It was yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Mr. Lowland, do you know that you're? Uh, do you have a physician, a rheumatologist, or you know, an oncologist, or this? Is this? I mean, it's like everything that could have happened or gone wrong with this thing. First, they was trying to contact the man uh, at both agencies, you know, those people who know about federal jobs. The uh, Human Resources Department, one guy, he wasn't answering the phone. I mean, it was just a whole, oh, I mean, just and so I was much. like, and he's saying that he, yeah, at the end, he learned patience. But at the end, I was like I mean, a joke. I learned, man. But in the but during the process, he was like, "What's going on? I don't understand." And then, ooh, ooh, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you are you serious? Listen, listen, listen you could and wait. One day when they called and said, "Okay, Miss No, we've cleared you of, you know, we we see that you have prescriptions, you know, for the drug that came up positive. We're gonna pass it along." But now we need you to, what is it? They needed you to repeat something. That's when they needed me to do all of the, the blood okay, tests. Okay, yeah, so then they found something to... else that they had to do as far as uh, running tests. He had to go do blood, more work blood, uh, more work blood. blood work. He says, right, after I'm like praying, crying out to God, Lord, please let this test, <laughs> oh, God, please let's just favor, grace, everything. So they telling him, so at this point, the process is moving forward. And then he says, I can't believe that got me trying to do something else. But I did. I, and I'm like, you were just barely getting it by the skin on your teeth. And now you're going to complain that they got you doing, you moving forward in the process. But you're going to complain that they got you doing something else. I'm like, really? You best to be thanking God that the process has moved forward. And you said you work, so has the patients worked out now? Yes. <laughs> yes. But it was like, seriously, it was like, because remember how he, how easy the interview was. It was less than 10, 15 minutes. He knew the job was his. God said it was his. And then for him to go from that to have to go through, I mean, it was like every week he was coming on, coming home with something. And I'm like, okay, but God has already said it's yours. And, but so now you can pick up. And I can like, pick up. Yes. <laughs> During this entire time, though, in the month of February, we've been fasting. Yes. And so my spiritual man has been in battle with my natural man which is not an easy process at all. Normally, you know, if I'm on a regular schedule, I have a positive demeanor most of the time. <laughs> most of the time, I have a positive demeanor. But because of the, the, the circumstances that surrounded all of this, there was an additional extenuating circumstances that bared weight upon me. And the Bible says we're supposed to let go of every weight that so easily beset us. Well, I was having a hard time letting that weight go because I was feeling like I'm doing everything I know how to do. But yet the enemy is, and again, we're, I'm, I'm thinking that it's the enemy that's doing these things, not having a complete understanding. And this, and this is, and I'll share this with you. And of course, we're at the end of the road, but the enemy shared with me that God's timing is perfect. And that had I have moved forward earlier, I may have missed what it is that God has set me up to do or, to, or, or where I'm to be when I go to where I'm supposed to go at the, pro the appropriate time. And so I'm looking at it now as, number one, I honestly do know that where God is sending me is going to be a great work that's going to be done in the lives of people. I know that. And so, of course, I'm thinking, you know, the enemy is doing everything he can to block my progress. But going back to our Bible study, the enemy may have been the one causing it, but it was God who's allowing it. You all see what I'm saying? So I believe God was allowing the enemy to, 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 to keep putting these different things in place to, to, to cause me to get frustrated, to, to allow my patience to, to, to come up to another level. Because where I'm going, I may have to 
ex, ex, uh, uh, exhibit more patience. I don't know where, I, this is gonna be brand new to me. I'm gonna be working with ROTC cadets. ROTC cadets are, as you know, within an age group of, of, of yeah. what, 19, what, how old? About 19, 20, 20 year olds, some of them coming from rich families. You know, so I'm gonna be dealing with all types of, of, of people with attitudes, personalities. Thank you, Dee. And so I know, I know I'm gonna have to come up, you know, in that level of patience because they may say some things that may rub me the wrong way. But I have to be able to stand my ground and, 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 and continue to be Christ-like and love my neighbor as Christ would love my neighbor. You got something you want to say? Not the sound man ain't got the mic. As Miss Mary said, you love him with the love of the Lord. <laughs> love him with the love of the Lord. The love of Jesus. Love of Jesus. So I love you with the love of Jesus. Um, go ahead. You, Miss Johns, want to say something? I want to say something. Oh, why I keep doing this? A long time ago, and I, I still fight with this sometimes, and this is one of the ways that kind of attacks us. We base a lot of what we uh, do on how we feel. And I have had to learn that, that that sometimes it's enemy coming at you to get you in your feelings, as we say, so you can say or do something that um, is not what God wants you to do. Um, so what I'm saying sometimes, and sometimes we'll throw our hands up and just give up because we, you know, mm. we, that he's gotten us to that place because the word says we'll have what we say, but we're human beings. And I think sometimes we give up too soon because we feel we've kept messing up, kept messing up. But that's but the love of God. All I can say is the love of God, the patience of God. Don't don't get mixed up what you believe with what you uh, has come out your mouth sometimes because of the pressure that's been put on you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you think, well, you know, I can't keep. How many times? I don't know if you maybe you guys are super spiritual, but that I, sometimes I get to a place where God, I'm coming to you. I'm going to use a, a thing from I used to hear comedians say sometime all the time. I say, God, another fine mess I've gotten us into. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, so sometimes you feel like you're tired of coming to God, but that, again, is the enemy. Don't mix up your feelings with where you are faith-wise. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, the, yeah. that's what we go on a lot of times is what we feel yeah. and not what the Word of God says. Sometimes you can be walking in the Word of God and feel like oh, you have missed him all the way. Mm -hmm. But God says stay in that Word and don't let those feelings come in mm -hmm. and, and mess you up. And I'm not saying don't have the feelings, but don't let them stop. Right, right. That's good. Yes, Elder. Me, it's, it's two, two, course, uh, two avenues, I guess you would say. There's a weight where you're waiting in ex, ex, anxiety and anxious and stuff. And then, <laughs> right. there's, then there's the weight where you are serene. Because mm. say, Scripture say what? Be anxious for nothing? Be anxious for nothing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you, so, so the patience would be you learn through the waiting to be serene. Mm. And on one level, not up and down, Absolutely. up and down, you're just serene about right. it. Now, I think that would be the patience you would try to cultivate and yeah. try to uh, uh, em, you know, put it in you. So when these things coming up, you're not only just waiting, but I'm serene about this way. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. And, and the thing that I wanted to say, and it's not, I mean, it's, it's going to sound like I'm throwing shade. I'm really not throwing shade, but... <laughs> oh, you threw a lot of shade already tonight, girl. But, <laughs> I mean... I, I want to make it clear just for other people who, like, when we're doing a fast like this, whether it be three days, seven days, or this 21 days that we're doing, because a lot of times we can associate, because we're not eating with our attitude <clears throat> or how we go through and experience things when I think that's kind of what uh, what Elder was referring to is that and again it's not let me just what say are you that. saying what I'm saying is that so because the statement that you made was that that you felt as if your some of the feelings that you were experiencing was due to you fasting and so my the point I'm trying to make is that when we are decreasing the spirit should be increasing in us. Yes, the flesh is suffering and being crucified, 
But I believe that that is part of what God is wanting us to do, and that's to allow the spirit man to really come to the top and resist, you know, to really try to keep those uh, unwanted feelings or emotions at bay is what I'm, I'm trying to say because if the spirit is increasing as we are decreasing the flesh, then we should, it should put us in a place where we are more discerning or more, um, and I know that it's different for, for everybody, but mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to stress is that, and the <laughs> word says that when you are fasting, it should not, I'm not paraphrasing, it should not even be showing about your appearance. No one should even know meaning that your countenance mm -hmm. and how you carry yourself should pretty much be even kill or as much as possible you should exhibit more of what the spirit is wanting and so I don't want I'm saying that to say because a lot of us can really you know we, we've all been at that point where we can say well I'm fasting you know I'm, I'm more, I'm more you know short tempered to you gotta have more patience <laughs> But really, yeah, that she, yeah, should that's we? That's where she going. You know what I mean? That's where she you going. Really, it's because it should be just the opposite. And, and and this is not an excuse, but because the spirit wars against the flesh, and if there is a a a if the flesh have any area of dominion in in that area, and the spirit man is the spiritual is trying to rise up, the flesh doesn't want to die easy. Absolutely. So there's, there's going to be tension. There's going to be conflict. And so there's, in, there's an internal conflict that happens. Right. Now, the problem is if, if after the work is done and you're still using that same excuse, you know, or you're using that excuse for, you know, five, ten years and you're down the road and you're still saying, well, every time I fast, I, I, I'm like this then there's, a, there's an issue because that means you're not learning anything. But if you're going through this particular season or this particular process, in the process, there is going to be conflict, spiritual conflict with one another. Absolutely, because that's part of the fast. That's part of the that's, fast. That's part of the fast. Right. But it's like who, who are we going to allow the spirit or the flesh to rule? Right. And, yeah. and, and, and you have so to allow you, you're right. You have to allow the spirit of, of the Holy Spirit to to rule. Mm -hmm. But if the Holy Spirit has not been ruling, then there's going to always be in that area. Right. So right. what are you saying? I'm, I'm, saying <laughs> I'm saying that while I was at work, nobody knew I was going through this. <laughs> only you. You're my best friend. Okay. So only you knew what I was going through. I no one that. else knew what I was going I through. So my countenance was good everywhere else I went. I understand. But when I came home to you, you know, I'm like. So that take care of home first. So what, what we've been that? talking about. Take care of home first. What we've been talking about on Sundays, intimacy. Take I was like, intimacy, first. I'm struggling. <laughs> I need you to speak to me. Take care of home I first. I need you to encourage me. Ministry begins at home. That's right. <laughs> and you had to minister to me. She had to minister to me, right, Nate? I needed you to minister to me. Absolutely. And Amen. You said I did. And you, you did that. minister to me. You kept me balanced. So when I went to work the next day, I was better. <laughs> but when I got home to the end of that day, we had to start all over again. <laughs> but that's how it operates. And now it would have been it's different if I went out there and I treated everybody in the world the way I was feeling. I wasn't doing that. I was allowing the spirit to rule in my life at work. But when I came home, I thought that I could, you know, let my hair down and, you could. and share with you what my what I really was feeling. Absolutely. My anguish, my my anxiety. We were just venting. Venting. <laughs> Don't you do that a lot? I do. Yeah. We were I was just venting. I, I was I, I had dominion. Absolutely. I'm like, you, man, you shouldn't have took that stuff. That's why it's part of your gut. Don't be venting to me. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> And, and I'm telling you, and there were. You brought it on yourself. See, man, I need another accountability partner. You could have passed that. <laughs> Look, that, that could have been checked off. You let me take it. <laughs> I was my home. Lord, but this woman you gave me, you let me take that medicine. 
I'm just glad that God has got the victory, though. Amen. And he always gets the victory. And so today you you were able to tell them when you were ready to start your position. Yes. So all of that, <laughs> you know, all of that. Um, but going back to the Bible study. Which is oh, we this still was Bible, Bible study. Bible this study. was no, absolutely no. This was, Bible study. This was tell on pastor. This was like tell pastor's business. Then y'all learn something tonight. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah they, look, they learned when they called me at work. Man, that's the drug man right there. <laughs> that's the drug man. I got my, 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 uh, my, my um, co-workers. co-workers out there down at the job because I shared with them what happened when the, the drug thing came up. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, pastor. <laughs> You the drug they man. Call him pastor now. Oh, pastor. Yeah, right now they call me pastor at work. Pastor. The, y'all, the pastor is the drug man. <laughs> so, you know, we laugh and joke. It's a, it's a joke now in my job now because I'm the drug man because I came up hot on the your analysis <laughs> test. But, you know, but going back to, you know, loving your neighbors, guys, and understanding that. And this, and I taught this some time ago. You remember we were talking about David when David went, and David's father sent him to the battlefield to to bring bread and cheese to his brothers. And his brother turned around and said, "What are you doing here? You just trying to get in the way?" And I, I we taught this lesson how David could have stood there and argued with his brother, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not realizing that the devil was using his brother to prevent David from killing Goliath. Mm-hmm. And had David stayed there arguing with Goliath, he would have missed the opportunity. I mean, arguing with his brother, he would have missed the opportunity to kill Goliath. But David had enough God in him to say, you know what, bro? I'm not going to argue with you. David turned turned away from his brother and his brother could have kept on arguing, could have snatched him, whatever the case may be. But you have have to know who your enemy is and recognize that it's not the person, but it's it's who is being used. The person is being used. So every one of us, there's no one, no human being that I, that according to the scripture and me understanding the scripture, you either have the spirit of God living in you or the spirit of Satan. There's no, there's no void. You're just not walking around. There's a, there's some spirit. You either have the, 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 the uh, sinful nature spirit or you have the Holy Spirit. So when God created mankind, he only became a living uh, uh, soul when God blew into his nostrils. He became a living soul, a living being. And, and so it requires a spirit, you know, for us to continue to function. And so when we don't um, uh, crucify the flesh or when we don't uh, repent, then, of course, the Bible says that Satan comes in. And, and you can clean, uh, clean this, this body up as much as you want. But if the Holy Spirit's not in there, the Bible says that sa- Satan will come in and occupy. Absolutely. And when the, when the house gets clean, chases Satan out. And if, but if he comes back and find out that the house is still empty, he comes right back in. But he brings seven more with him. Yeah. More wicked. The Bible says he comes seven more, more wicked than the first. Right. And so there's, there's a spirit living in each and every one of us, whether it be the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. So our responsibility is to understand that somebody, whoever, whoever's coming, opposing force, we have to look, okay, is this Satan? Because there are times, man, so I, I'll be like, girl, that spirit in you right now, we need to rebuke that. You know, when she wants to argue about stuff, you know, came home today, we were messing with each other, and I walked in, and she, she was doing something. <laughs> I'm going to tell my business. Yeah, I'm going to tell your business. <laughs> so, I, you know, I pull in the driveway and... Um, it's 720. It's 720. I got two minutes. Drive into the... <laughs> pull into the driveway, and I'm talking to one of my best friends on the phone, and we're talking about, you know, things. And then I get a text. She texts me. I hear you drive up. Um, I was trying to wait for you to come in the house, but I'm going upstairs. No, I did a text. Now, how he doing all that on the text? Because I know my wife. No, you don't. I know my wife. So I walk in the house. I hang up the phone. So I get off the phone. (laughs) I get off the phone because I'm trying to catch her before she goes upstairs. So I walk in. And uh, so now I'm not. Now I'm. This is what I saw now. This ain't what I'm thinking I saw. I walk in and I said, like, okay, what that text all about? (laughs) <laughs> what you doing out there all this time? 
I said, I just drove into the drive. You ain't just driving to the driveway. You've been out there, you know, and just give me this. I said, you know what? That spirit on you, girl. Uh -uh. I got Bible study tonight. I ain't about to entertain this spirit tonight. <laughs> And we laughed and joke about it, but that's an example of, you know, now we had she been serious and I had a bad day and I came home like in a bad mood. That could have really started an argument. And I would have been arguing with her, not arguing with the enemy, you know, really, because the enemy would have, you know, possessed her. And I would have just, you know, all I really had to do was just rebuke the enemy. But I would have been arguing with her. Instead of rebuking the enemy. And preparing for Bible study. And preparing for Bible study. Man, I would have came up in here, man. <laughs> laying hands on folks. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I got the power. I did it once already tonight. And I'll do it again. <laughs> Amen, you all. Man, look, we've had fun tonight. But, I mean, the, of course, the, 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 to summarize tonight, Jesus said that there's a, there's a new way. And that he does not want us to operate in the old way and that we need to be conscious enough, spiritually conscious enough to recognize who our enemy is. Mm -hmm. And that even when people are acting unseemly and they're doing things that, you know, that's against, you know, what you desire for them to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, treat people the way you want to be treated. Amen. Bottom line, if you want to be loved, then you must first show love. And it may be hard loving someone who's unlovable, mm -hmm. but Jesus said that he's given us the ability to do so. Mm -hmm. And he also said that if he was able to do it, then we should be able to do it. He, he, they put him on the cross. There are two people on each side, one person on each side. On that cross, one person was taunting at him. If you're the son of God, you know, get, us, get down from this cross and, and get us down also. And, then another one was saying, you know, Father, you know, I mean, Jesus. Uh, well, he actually, he didn't really talk to Jesus. He talked to the other guy and said, look, you on the cross because you deserve to be up here. Jesus don't deserve to be up here. And Jesus told the, the other guy and said, hey, from this day forward, you shall be with me, you know, in heaven. But also before Jesus gave up the ghost, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. These are the same people that was like, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Jesus knew he had to go on the cross. He knew he had to go on the cross. But the people didn't know it. So what was in their heart? The intent was in their heart to cause him harm, to kill him. They had in their heart to kill him. They didn't have in their heart to crucify him so that he can save the world. Right. They didn't know that. Right. They wanted to crucify him. Yes. But who... What was being operated through them? Mm -hmm. The spirit of, of, of the devil, the, the Satan, Satan spirit. Satan was operating through the people. Crucify him, crucify him. Satan was operating through them. And God was allowing that to happen because Christ had to be crucified. So it goes to the same thing in our lives. There's sometimes God will allow Satan to use other people mm -hmm. because there's something that he's trying to bring out of us or there's something that he's trying to do in terms of pushing us in the, in the direction that we need to go in. Or, again, that there's Satan, and Satan doesn't realize what God is trying to do. And, and Satan is obvious, obvious, obviously really trying to hurt or harm you. And, but we have to recognize that regardless of the fact, regardless of what has, what's happening, God still will make all things good on our behalf. Amen. We just have to trust him. And just believe that all things are going to work together for, my, for the good. Amen. It's going to work together for the good. I, I don't know if we had any comments tonight. No, but, but nonetheless, let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's, let's make sure every battle that we fight, that we're fighting the right enemy. Now, God says, now the Bible says, you know, we're supposed to love our enemies. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking about Satan, you know. But those people that Satan is using, mm -hmm. you got to love those people. Because those people... They really don't, they really, in their, in their right Holy Ghost mind, they really don't mean you any harm. But Satan is using them. And so, of course, Satan is always going to be, you know, our, our enemy. He's always going to be our enemy. The Bible tells us that we're, we're in the world, you know, but we're not of the world. And, and so we, we can, we're, we're not to, you know, um, celebrate those things that Satan does. Don't celebrate them, you know. But understand that Satan, he's our enemy. 
And that's who our true, real enemy is. Amen. 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 Any final comments before we close tonight? Love you guys so much. Of course, you know, I want to end this night with a, with a prayer of salvation. Anybody who wants to give their life to Christ tonight, you may do so. You do that by saying this prayer with me. If you honestly, you know, really believe that this is the night for you and you really believe that you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior, this is a simple prayer. I always say that this is the beginning of a conversation that you should continue to have with Jesus Christ. Yes. Say this prayer with me. Father God, Father God you, know you know my life and you know how I've lived it. You know I've lived it. I, ask you I ask you to come into my heart, come into my heart and forgive me, and forgive me of, my of my sins. I believe, I believe in your son. In your son. His, name His name is Jesus. Is Jesus. He, died he died on the cross for me. They buried him in a tomb. They buried him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose from the dead, from the dead. With, all power with all power in his hands. In his hands. That, power that power is what saves, is me. What saves me. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Father for, saving me for saving me and giving me, and giving me new, life new life through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can we celebrate those that may have given their life to the Lord tonight? Amen. And that was you, someone out there, if that was you that's giving your life to Christ tonight, we want to know and we want to hear about it. Please give us an opportunity to add to, to this brand new life of yours that you've given the Lord your life. And we want to celebrate with you and we want to continue to encourage you along the way. We love you guys so much. And so thank you all again for joining us on tonight's Bible study. I'm Pastor T. This is Pastor Latrilla. We're here at the love, uh, the love church. We're here at the Bridge church. church. It is the love church. God, hallelujah at the Love Church, at the Bridge Church, where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. We love you guys. Until the next time, you guys know what's up. I'm out. God bless you. We're out. We're out. You yes. forgot to say it with we're me. Out. We're out. We're out. God bless you. Good night. Don't be telling my business. <laughs>